Let's open up, open up the letter that has been written to us. That letter is named in the book of the Bible, meaning the book of James. Let us open up his word, his letter unto us. We'll read it first, then we'll pray, and then we'll see exactly what God has in store for us today. So if you find your place in the book of James, stand with me to reading of God's word. We're going to read all 18 verses to keep it in context. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results, so that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. But if any man, any one, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously without reproach, and it will be given to him. He must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like a surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. But the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position, and the rich man is to glory in his humiliation, because like flowering grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and if flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed, so to the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Our scripture today, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been appointed, approved, excuse me, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot tempt by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. When, then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it gives birth forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. In the ex exercise of His will, He brought forth us by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among His creatures. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you would, uh, Lord, bring life to these words of yours. Only you can do this kind of work, Father, so we pray that you do the work that is required for us to be able to hear. So, Father, we pray as we go into the Scripture today that we would have ears to hear you and what you have to say to us and where we're at in our lives this very moment, this very day. And may we be willing, Lord, to hear from you, not from me, but from hear from you the things that you have set before us today, that we may rejoice, Lord, as we open this letter up to us, Lord, let us rejoice that you love us enough to write to us, love us enough that you would give us the encouragement that is needed to press on through the many trials that face us each and every day, but help us, Lord, to also know the difference and temptation. So, Father, we pray that as we go through the Scripture today and rejoice in you, give the increase as required here of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, what you would have for each individual in this room and anybody else on the Internet, that it would be addressed directly to them, that it would be needful for them to hear, that they would be encouraged, Lord, after you have spoken to them. Lord, give the increase in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Looking at the book of James, I hope it has been uh, wonderful for you as it has been for me 
thinking about the trials that we face each and every day, right? what we had last week, we were looking at our attitude uh, in trials, and I hope that last week we looked at that, as we are not to be just mere hearers of God's Word, but we actually uh, bring these things to us that we may look at them and see how we are doing in our walk with the Lord. I hope that was your desire, and I hope God uh, has uh, spoken to you for that. And thinking about our attitude, if we have the right attitude, it'll be a whole lot less uh, uh, griping and complaining. Amen? And a whole lot more contentment. Then we looked at the advantages of trials of what is that. And to encourage us, to strengthen us, to uh, uh, give us endurance to fight the good fight of faith. And this is why it's given to us that we may be strengthened in all these things that we know the one that we must go to, and that is God himself. Where can it go but to the Lord, right? And, and this is wonderful stuff. This is the letter actually written to us. Have you looked at the Bible? Have you looked at the book of James like this? Just open up. I got a letter from God today. Let's see what the Lord has to say to me today. Each one of us has a letter, and it's in your hands. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. So we do see that uh, looking at these trials, James is encouraging them, going through many difficult things that they are dealing with, being uprooted, uh, everything stripped from them because they are now Jewish believers, now people of Christ, people that love God, right? And they are suffering persecution, and James is writing to them. God is writing to us if we are being persecuted uh, because we're Christians, and we have to make sure that we, if we bring that title to us, it's not because we cause somebody to hate us just because we want somebody to hate us or to be mean to them just because we can. Then we flip it around. Then we say, hey, I'm being persecuted because I'm a Christian. No, you're just being a jerk and people don't like you. We need to know the difference of that. Amen? Because we're not allowed to grab that title when we've had so many brothers and sisters gone before us and suffer in such a way and be crushed and run over by steamrolls and everything else to take that title lightly and place it to us. Oh, my. Oh, my. May we not do that. May we be so careful of that that we would be willing to listen to what we have. Do we realize at this past week that as endurance is being strengthened in us, right, do we realize that we are perfect and complete and lacking nothing in God? He has given every spiritual blessing that we have in order to walk this way in this life. Isn't that wonderful? Because what happens, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but I want you to, to think about as we're coming through the book of James, I don't want us to forget last week because it's important for us this week. Landing on verse 12, it says, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. All right? And so we're, we're going to get to that in just a minute, but we have to understand and remember what took place before that. Is the endurance because you are a Christian. You have suffered much. And he's telling them to be of good courage. Be of good courage. Consider it all joy. Remember that? And now that's hard to, for us to hear when we're in that and we're taking all of that so personal and we have emotions that drive us down. But the, the, the result of this, what's taking place in the background, is on the outside that affects the inside. And today we're going to get to the inside that affects the outside. Amen. And the inside is us, and it's not pretty. But God is perfect and complete in giving us all that we need to be able to say, it is I. Amen? It is I, Lord. Lord, help me this very day. So we have trial by faith last week. This week we have the uh, deliverance from the snare of the fowler, or you could put it like this, deliverance from the trap of the trapper. Right, same thing, Satan is out there. He is roaring like a roaring lion, uh, wanting to uh, mess us up, get us to, res uh, to react versus respond, get us to take a pity party, whatever that is. It has so many 
different ways of what that looks like. But again, I want you to look and understand that there is a source of temptations, which we'll see. We'll see the sequence in temptation, and then we'll also see the solution of temptation. And we already know that one. Amen? The solution is God and His mercy. But I want to ask you a question today, just thinking about what we have here today is, uh, are you blessed? Are you blessed? Now, I'm not talking about the, the horizontal. I'm talking about the vertical. You have been given everything that is, is needed for you to live a life unto the Lord, right? This blessing that we have been given is not just a smiley face. It's what's down deep in us that we belong to the Lord, amen? We belong to the Lord Christ because we are a bondservant, a slave unto this Lord. Are you blessed? And if we get out of focus, we will be more concerned about the problem on the horizontal, the earthly problems, and we're not looking up, looking vertical, looking unto Jesus, our Lord and our God. And when we look there, what happens? We, we, we are persevering through the storms. But when we look down at our storms and we wonder why, 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 instead of the who, which causes us to look at the what are you teaching me? Did you come today? Lord, teach me. Did we come today? Lord, teach me what is wrong in my life and teach me how right you are, how good you are. Teach me, Lord, that I may have eyes to see. Now, listen, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that you are here and nobody's at the door uh, with guns to kill you. We are blessed. That's why I say we don't get to take that title and, 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 and use it as persecution when somebody just doesn't like me because I'm mean to them. Or I take that title because I lost the job for no apparent reason. Or whatever it may be, we don't get brothers and sisters let us not use that. If we use it, it better be right, Amen. So when we look at a privilege of that, and when you understand that you probably don't want that, therefore you wouldn't be using that title. But the whole point is this, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that he has a God that he can ask of for wisdom. Skill to work out the knowledge that he's given us. Skill to work out what he has written to us today. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Are you blessed? I know I'm driving this point home, but I'm telling you, we just ride over this. If we forget what it means, it means to, to be highly favored by God. And if you are a, a lover of Jesus Christ, man, you are a blessed man and woman. Amen. You are so blessed. We can't even comprehend how blessed we are. Why? Because one place where we live at, we're not suffering. Like these people in the background were. We're not suffering because we're Christians. You may be, but blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. God didn't raise up quitters. Amen? He doesn't raise up quitters. Those that began to work will finish the work. He that began to work will finish the work. Right? Those that started the work will not finish the work because they did it on their own ability and it'll never last. Those that are Christian in name only will put it on the door on the way out. Hang their coat up on it on the way out. When things get tough, the first thing they put aside, the first thing they declared they're not is a Christian in their action. But you know, it's easy to say that we're Christian and we're blessed. When everybody loves us, it's so easy to say that. Man, it's easy to witness in this room. Nobody in this room is going to reject a track from you. <laughs> Amen? But the challenge and the proven character comes from for those that are not doing like you think they should do. Are you still blessed? Are you still able to, even though they're knocking you down and everything else. It's easy to have a character when everything's good, a good character with that. But how is your character when you're being attacked? If we react, it's horrible. 
if we respond, falling back on who God is, the source of all blessedness, right? The one that gives us the ability to persevere under the heaviness of the load of this life. And once we have been approved, and that's when it's all over. That is celebration day, amen? When we're completely approved in God, it's because there's no sanctification work taking place. We're done. We're going on to glory, right? But until then, he's the work that's being done in us, and that is done by trials. But here's the catch as we go into the temptation part. Here's the catch while we're going through the trials, like the poor people that were suffering really bad in, this, in the Scripture that we have here, does not give them permission to sin. Just because they didn't have anything to eat doesn't give them the right to steal. Now, think about your mind and how you had justified that this week, right? Well, I don't have this, and they have it. They got plenty, so they ain't going to miss it. No, no, no. This is the, what we're talking about. We're going to get down to the inside today, amen? We, we're, we're not allowed to sin because God has put us in a trial. God is testing us, but he's not tempting us, amen? There's a difference. God is not going to tempt you to fail, God will test you for endurance and strength that you may work your spiritual muscles unto the glory of the God, of the one who preserves you, perseveres you, that gives you strength to persevere. Amen. This is the God of glory. He'll lose none of his children. Are you blessed? Have you been forgiven? Have you received forgiveness? Are you a child of the king? Have you seen my big brother? It's Jesus Christ himself. Are you blessed? Amen. We are blessed because we have a God that will approve us in his timing. He is the source of our blessedness. What comes next? Oh, my, that we received the crown of life. We received the crown of life. Did you hear that? We will receive the crown of life. We have it but we also will receive it. Amen? And there's many things you can pour into this, but I'm going to keep it simple. And the part is, is that we'll receive the crown of life. What is that? Life everlasting. We have that crown now. We'll have that uh, uh, general uh, uh, crown at that time. And all of these crowns that we ever get will be cast at the feet of Christ. Amen? We have the crown, and it's his crown that he's given us through his blood, right? The crown of life. You have that, and you will always have that. You may have to stand, you imagine standing before God, and this is going to happen if the last part of this is true for you and me. He's going to place a crown. Someone's going to place a crown on your head. And it has the idea of a an athlete getting into the race to run. He has the idea that he's running for a reason. He's excited for the, for the prize that sets ahead of him, and that's for us as well. We're not just to enter into the race and then sit on the sidelines. We enter into the race like there is a prize for us to win, and that is to give God the glory of every part of our, our lives. There is a prize because of the source that has been given unto us, meaning God dwells in us. Why? Because this last one, the crown of life, which the Lord has promised. Has, has God ever broken a promise? No. Has God ever broken a promise? Praise the Lord for that, and he's not going to start today. To those who love him. Now, that's big because the question lies before us, not if we're Christian, but are we lovers of Jesus Christ? And I hope your heart just overflows with the thought that you are able to say, not having the ability but able to say, man, I am a lover of Jesus Christ. I had this one person, me and Karen, was walking out the store the other day. She had a cross on her, her uh, around her neck. I asked her, I said, are you a lover of Christ? Because, man, I love him to death. Do you? 
Now, I don't know the lady at all, but it was interesting words that she gave. It really, it really is a mirror for us. Are we truly lovers of Jesus Christ? Then we're not going to blame him for anything. Amen. We're not going to blame him because you put me in this trial. I was tempted to do it. So because you put me in the trial, I was tempted. I gave in to it because you put me in the trial. Therefore, I sinned. Therefore, as you, that's the problem. We know how that fleshly mind works. And every one of us has said that at one time or the other. Repent of that now. But we see the power of God and the source of temptation uh, uh, and him being able to bring us through all these trials, uh, the perseverance under trial, the weightiness of all that, being able to persevere, to be approved by the king of glory, be receiving a crown of life that the Lord has promised because of the love that he's given us, the ability to love him. That's, man, that's huge. And, you know, each time I read that passage, I said, oh, my, you know, oh, my, that is way too big for me. Amen. And it always will be because God is that good and pure and holy and right. And we see that it addresses us, our seventh commandment. Remember, we have 108 verses in the book of James, 54 of those are imperatives, meaning the command directly to us. And you think about the six that we had last week, right? How did we do with that? And I asked myself that. How did I do with the commands that God gave me to, to live this way? How did I do with that? Because out of the Bible, the Bible says we are lovers of Jesus Christ, and out of the love for him and our uh, thankfulness that he has forgiven us, right, out of all of that, we are able to live a life in obedience to him. Love and obedience never have been separated. And that's easy for us to say. But there are some that really struggle to with that, and all they have is just a... a, a Skin deep profession, there's no uh, possession at all. Like I was. But by the grace of God, not now. Says to us, it says, let no one, our seventh commandment, imperative, let no one say, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. He himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Do you see that? You see where your finger's pointing now? Not just like this, but it's all pointing at us. We don't get to blame God. Let no one say when he is tempted. What is, what is tempted? A temptation is something outside of us that is not sin until we react in it. Okay, until we pick it up, the temptation, the temptation could be there. There's temptation here now. There's temptation everywhere, right? Temptation is not sin until you pick it up. Remember the trap? Remember the snare of the fowler, right? He has traps out there all day long for us. And there's many more waiting on you when you leave here today or while you're in here today. Let no one say when he is tempted that he is being tempted by God because of the trials that were in the paragraph or the passage before this. These two are going hand in hand. Because of our hard times, well, God knows I'm weak and, and I need to drink. You know, God knows I'm an alcoholic, I need to get drunk. Well, God knows I'm a pothead, I need to smoke, whatever that may be. Right? There's many things, it don't have to be that extreme. God knows I like TV and I'd rather watch TV more than Dig in his word. See, it's the same thing. Giving in to that temptation makes it real. Giving in to the temptation is not tempted by God. We don't get to blame God for it. Hey, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we're not able to blame God for causing us to sin? And, that, and that's good, you know, we... We think of many things here, but I tell you, so let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. 
for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Listen to that. God, being thrice holy, thrice good, right, all good, all knowing, all perfect, right, cannot tempt you with sin. Do you agree to that? You must agree to it. Because what it's doing is he's telling you right now, even though Satan is not mentioned in this passage at all, he's telling us really, as we look at this first part, the source of temptation is right here. The source of temptation is the devil himself or someone else or whatever your desires are. You see that? God is not going to tempt, be t uh, would not tempt anyone. God is, aren't you glad that God is good? Aren't you glad that there is no fault whatsoever in God? Aren't you glad that his judgments are good? And when he casts somebody into the wrath, his wrath forevermore, right, his judgments are still good. Amen. He will always be good. And so we don't get to blame God for not being good. That's so, that's, that's, it's not really profound to anybody. We hear God is so good. Brother Ben introduced me to that song. And man, I love that song because it's true. God is so good and he's laid out everything that I need in order to walk this Christian life and not sin be sinning less each day. And we see this in God. God, what is temptation? Temptation is given from who? Remember this story in the, in the Bible when temptation said this right here? Mr. Temptation himself. Did God really say <laughs> not to eat of that particular tree? Did God really say this? And what do you do with it? Man, if you realize how poisonous the TV was and what it was doing to you, you would cut it off, maybe even throw it out. But there are some good things that could be used on a TV screen, sermons and studies and everything else. So you would suffer in that point. But just think about that. The question, did God say, I couldn't drink? No, he didn't say you couldn't drink. He just said you couldn't get drunk. Amen. But why would you drink? me who used to be a drunk, why would you drink if you wasn't going to get drunk? That in my brain just doesn't add up. You drink because you want to get high off of the alcohol. You don't smoke a, 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 a joint because of the aroma. Man, it smells really good. It's the best kind ever, right? No, you do it with a purpose and you want to blame it on God. Well, God, you grew it. Think about it. I had those, and I, that's why I'm able to say to that, but I was not a child of God, but God will not tempt you with evil. Isn't that good? And don't get mixed up on that because TV and gluttony and everything else is just as bad. Don't think it's the major sins only. It is not the major sins only. He that knows to do right and does not, to him it is sin. Okay, so it's not the... You know, the big sins that God's only concerned about, he's, he's concerned about all sin. And he's also concerned about your growth in your walk with him. Now, we started this uh, uh, book of James and asking this question that we have in our Behold Your God series. Are you willing to be changed by God today? If he points something out in your life, are you willing today to say, yes, Lord, that is wrong and I need to stop it. Thank you for pulling that out for me, Lord. Thank you. Do not let me get away with sin. Thank you for pointing that out because the last thing I want to do is sin against somebody I love so much. See, love is the driving force of the true Christian, of the unseen Christ. Blessed are you. Blessed am I. Blessed are we to receive the book of James in this way. But and then it goes on deeper. It's not going to let us fly by it. 
after we realize that God himself will not tempt anyone because God does never, ever, 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 ever do anything evil whatsoever. And you, we've gone through the book of uh, 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 Isaiah. We've gone through the Old Testament. Looking at the book of Isaiah, looking at the Old Testament, you see God killed a lot of people. And he was righteous doing it. And he was good in doing it. Now, can you comprehend that? We have people that pervert that and say, well, God never would place anybody in hell. Well, because he is good, he will. Those who will not trust in him. But it is a blessing. I, I just want to just say this one more time. Man, I love the Lord. I haven't arrived, but I've left. But I haven't arrived. I want to love him more. I want to hate sin more each and every day. I don't want to give in to any of this stuff. Uh, that causes me to sin that you may think is nothing to in, in your life or I may think your sin is nothing really to worry about but I tell you it's just it's just it's just horrible that we were sin about somebody who to, to somebody's been so good to us it's just horrible that we would even consider doing it the trap is there but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. You know what he's saying? When you sin, you need to own up to it. When you sin, it's not because of somebody else. When you sin, you did it, you own up to it, you repent of it, and you ask God, Lord, don't let me get away with any sin. You know, you ask yourself, if you're a lover of Jesus Christ, when's the last time you asked that prayer? Lord, if there's any sin in me, it, please reveal it to me. Isn't this what James is kind of getting us to? He will as we continue to go through. But let no man say when he is tempted, it was God that did it. But look, it comes down to this. When one is tempted, enticed, one is looking at the bait that his weakness is in, whether it be there's all kinds of stuff you can put here from the littlest to the biggest, if that's such a thing. But when one is tempted, it's when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Okay, where does that, lust is not outside of us. Desire of a want is not outside of us. You get that? So, if it's not outside of us, we're still in a fallen vessel which has desires. And when those things are brought up, and if we don't, like Timothy tells us, right? Paul telling Timothy, saying, flee from all appearance of sin. You can't handle it. And he's not just telling, Paul's just not telling Timothy. Paul is telling us, the Holy Spirit of truth is telling us, don't think you could go into a place and think that it, when it's just full of sin that you could go in and not be part. You're not that strong. Flee from all appearance of sin. Why? Because... Why put yourself in the sense of temptation where you know you're weak at, you know you're going to fail? Why do that to yourself? Better yet, why dishonor God in doing that? That you may fall into that. But listen how it, how it works out. We see the sequence of this temptation. It says uh, within uh, verse uh, 14, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust is conceived... See that? Something happened right there. When lust is conceived, when it's received, when you step, when you put your lust into action, when you make it happen, something, what happens then? That's when you got outside of just being tempted. You made that, you turned that temptation into sin by you giving in to it instead of turning away from it. You see that? When lust is conceived, it gives forth birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. There's much to be, to be said here, but praise the Lord, we're running uh, on time. 
uh, not running out of time, but look. So who do you get to blame for this sin? Have you, no, don't answer this. Don't shake your head. Have you ever blamed someone else for your sin? Have you ever blamed the devil for your sin? He's not the one to blame. We see that in Scripture today, right? If we sin, who is the one to blame? Can't hear you. Self. We are the one to blame. We're the one that uh, took that lust and put it into action, brought it in. Therefore, we sinned at that time. Therefore, we brought it to life. It's like a seed throwing out there and watering it. Then it comes up. How'd that get there? Because we planted it. Not only planted it, we watered it. We babied it. We grew it up. And then we're surprised it showed up. I mean, is that, that's just unreal when you think about Wesley Stevens. Are you that dumb? Are you that dull that you can't see what happens when you, when you look too long, stay too long, go too far? Right? Because that's what sin does. It'll make you look longer than what you wanted to look at, make you go further than what you wanted to go, right? And it cost you more than you were willing to pay. This is what he's telling us. He said, don't, don't be deceived, brothers. Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. He said, don't be deceived. Why? Because we can't handle it. But we are more than overcomers in Christ, which he again has given us everything that we need to overcome temptation. Amen? He's given us everything that we need to overcome this temptation. So we saw the source of temptation. We saw the sequence in temptation. And now let's look at the solution. Every good thing thing given in every perfect gift is from above. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes we take what God gives us, which is good, we take it and use it to sin. Don't think that James just overrode that, that we wouldn't have to deal with that. Sometimes God blesses us with money and we use it to sin. Sometimes God blesses us with a job and then we use it to sin. Sometimes God blesses us with overabundance of something and then we use it to sin. Why? Because our desires start coming back up. It's mine. It's mine. See, that's the biggest thing that we have is, a, is our problem is we think everything belongs to us. And as we become Christians and understand everything belongs to him. How dare us? This is mine. You don't have to teach a kid that. They already know that. You have to teach the adults that it's not. <laughs> Amen? It's not yours. It's his, and it's to be used for his glory. Amen? I mean, how good is this? I mean, I, brother and sister, I'm going to tell you, there's much more that we can pour out into this, and, but the Lord has delivered us from that. But we just have to own up to our sin. We don't get to blame it to anybody, no matter how bad the temptation is. We're to own up to it. It's our sin. We did it. We did it. Can, can you, as a believer in Christ, admit that to yourself? Can you, as a believer, admit that, man, I watched that TV program way too long. I could have been in the Word of God, learning something from God. Not that all TV shows are wrong. I'm not saying that, right? And so, but the whole idea is that this God is so good to us, he's wrote us a letter. He's written us a letter. And it says, this is the Christian walk, driven by the new birth, by the word of truth, of all those that have the, has been given the ability to love him. Now, the thing is, is your love single-mindedness? Is your love has the singleness of just Christ himself, or do you try to apply everything else in there, right? Now, I'm not saying you throw out your wife and your, and, your, and your husband and all that. We know Scripture addresses that, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Men, have you owned up to that? You should be, I should be hearing an echo. No, no, no. 
Why? Because that's big. Are we trying to aim and hit that is the question. Are we? Are we just being hearers of the Word? Are we being sinful by not doing what we're supposed to be doing, the sin of omission? Every good thing is given, and every perfect gift is given from above. Isn't that good? Isn't God so good? You can never change that word about being excellent, pure, holy, right. And this is all this thing. These are all the things that should be applying in our lives, our way of thinking, our right thinking of sin, our right thinking of temptation, our right thinking of who God is, right, and our right thinking of who we are. Trials come, and you may fall in those, but it does not give us permission to sin. Amen? Does not give us permission. Why? Because God is good, and every good and perfect gift is from above. Now, think about that gift. When you think about the, the solution to temptation is the gift. What is the gift? Are you a lover of Jesus Christ today? That's, that's part of the gift. You have everlasting life. That's part of the gift. Your sins has been put away as far as the east is to the west. That's part of the gift. The gift is that you know, know him. You love him. You cherish him. And that being all that you need. Uh, but God has not dismissed everything else that you're responsible for. We're responsible for our wives and the wives, responsible for the way that they uh, work with us and teach us and show us the things. And we're responsible for those that are uh, over us in this world. We're responsible how we uh, have our character in God because he's done a work in us. Amen? This is the power of God in us that he's writing to us saying, every good thing given Every perfect gift is from above. That means conviction of your sin is from above. Hey, aren't you glad that God won't let you get away with sin? Amen? <laughs> aren't you glad that God will not let you get away with the smallest, if it was possible, sin? That's good. We praise the Lord. You know what that tells us? That tells us that we have the Holy Spirit of truth that dwells in us, and the Holy Spirit of truth will not let us get away with sin. Praise God for that. Amen. What a gift that is. What a gift it is from the God of glory, the one that uh, controls all things, created all the lights. Created. Think about his holiness. God is a consuming fire. There's not one flaw in him. Think about the lights that they're describing. It has a Canaanite kind of uh, uh, thinking in the background right here. But what James is telling us about the Father of lights, our God, the one that is right to us today, is the one to put those lights there. Amen? He placed them there today, and they're still shining. How much more is the Father of lights looking at the stars and the moons? Everybody likes to look at that, especially when we have that Carolina blue sky at night. And they just shine forth. You ever just kind of contemplate that? How does that hell there in that one spot with just hanging there? Same way we are on this earth. Because the God of glory put him there. And he holds all things in place. In him, there's no variation or shifting shadow, whether it be of eclipse or whether it be just a, a fading star. God never goes up or down in his holiness. In his pure light and all that he is, right, in all that pureness, all that he is, right, there's not a shadow or a flaw in him. Amen. Not one flaw in him. That's why he can't be, he can't tempt anybody with evil because it's not part of him. Isn't that good? Every good gift is given from the God of glory, which he does not change his mind about you and about me. Aren't you glad about that? We love him in I can't get it out. 
His unchangeableness, right? We, we love that, and we should anchor our teeth into that. Why? Because God does not change who He is, but He changes us that we may be in His presence. Isn't that wonderful? This is God of glory. There's, there's no question about who He is. If you read the Bible, there's no question. It's plain and simple to us. For the Holy Spirit that dwells in us has given us the understanding that we may look upon this God and say, you don't change at all and ever do you or will you ever change who you are. Therefore, Lord, I have a problem. I'm unholy. I'm unholy, Lord, and I need you. Help me, Lord. And that's when you come to salvation. Listen to this right here. In the exercise of his will, do you see that? Verse 18, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Amen and amen. The word of truth is that you're a horrible sinner. The word of truth is he is a great saver, the Lord of glory. He saves roaches and cockroaches and worms like us and robes us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of truth, which they heard, and that's why they're being persecuted. I saw Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to me except the Father draw him. In uh, John chapter 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ himself. Speaking these words, they heard that. In the first fruits of those that have been born again unto him, unto him, uh, unto him, have we been born to new creation? Has a, uh, a soteriology uh, taken place here, not an eschatology in the background, a new creation, a new everything taking place? You are a miracle walking right now today because God recreated you in his image, amen? And he is forming you into the image of Christ, and that's wonderful stuff. Why? Because we know the source of temptation, we know what happens when we think just a little bit of sin, what that'll happen. Giving in to any temptation, we see the sequence there, but we also know the solution. And that solution is God himself, the God of glory. By his truth, he has birthed us into his family. He adopted us, and we owe him everything. May we hate sin more today than we did yesterday. May we hate sin more tomorrow than we will the next day than we did today. May our prayer be how blessed we are because God has done a work in us through Christ and for us, and to us. He changed us from hating him to loving him. Blessed is the man who perseveres. Blessed is the man who runs the race and wins. The trophy is already there. The race is already won. But you know, people like me don't get it. They get in the race and act like they win it. <laughs> it's just they're not smart you know but the point is is that we get in the race to win the race because we owe him everything everything this god is so good to us and if you drank just a sip of water today you are a blessed man you're a blessed individual just a sip of water we have conditioned air in this room today we're blessed we have lights that go out and, and fade and fail, not like the God of the Father of lights, but we have these things. We're blessed people. You have a vehicle to drive, you're, you're blessed. You have a job, you're blessed. But it doesn't mean you're not blessed if you don't have these things. There's the balance. He's talking to those that have lost everything. He said, blessed are you. They're trusting in the Lord to find contentment and satisfaction in the God of glory. Are you blessed? Blessed indeed. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And I, Lord, I know that there's so much more that could be added into this. And I pray, Lord, that you 
Lord, uh, we're pleased with the message. That you alone, Lord, would do a work in us that would be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, of truth in our lives, that we don't get to blame sin on anybody but us. And that just the first look is the open door to bring, bring it in and manifest sin. Whether it be of what we deserve or what, Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit of truth would do the convicting work there to do the strengthening work and the blessedness of the people of God, knowing that we belong to the God of glory who changeth not. Lord, help us this day to worship you in all your splendor and all your glory and all your goodness. Help us, Lord, this day as we seek you and prepare us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.